Glad you could join us. Now, the Opposition National Democratic Congress has accused Vice President and Governing MPP of manipulating figures and misleading Ghanaians on its achievements in infrastructural projects undertaken after three and a half years in government. Speaking at its ongoing weekly press briefing, Communications Officer of the party, Sami Jainfi, criticizes the Baumia presentation, describing it as a lacking candor and deliberate distortion of facts. Let's join Sami Jainfi now, speaking live. Druman gets a town rules, and yet you hold a major town hall project in the capital city of Accra and make the claim that you have done the rules when the evidence of the ground show that you have not done the rules. This is an insult to the chiefs and people of Brumankese. And ladies and gentlemen, here again, we'll show you video evidence to that effect. Can we see the do video of the Brumankese town rules? Dr. Baumia claims to have done. Thank you very much. Ghost project number five. The claim on government's delivery tracker that they have rehabilitated the and you know, and let, them not, let, let them not make the mistake of pulling down these projects because we have all the screenshots there said and so they cannot dispute any of the claims we are making here we've gone through the delivery tracker because of time we cannot show you all the screenshots but should they try to pull a fast one on us by pulling those these projects down the screenshots we have will expose them Ladies and gentlemen, goes project number five. The claim on government's delivery tracker that this that they are they have rehabilitated the Anyanambrim Primary School in the Sefiriosu municipality is another lie. No such rehabilitation works has been undertaken at the said school. Can we see a video of the Anyanambrim Primary School which Dr. Bawumia claims? that this government has rehabilitated. Can we see that video? This is the school Dr. Baumia claims to have rehabilitated. Just look at the windows. Look at the state of this dilapidated building that government claims to have rehabilitated. Okay, I think this can suffice. Ghost project number six. The claim on government's delivery tracker that they have constructed an astroturf in the Adenta constituency is another palpable falsehood. Adenta, fortunately, is in Accra. You can visit there after this press conference. And you will see that President Ekufuado has not constructed any astroturf. Ladies and gentlemen, let us see the site which yes where they claim to have constructed an astroturf It's okay. Guardians have seen the astroturf Dr. Baumia was talking about. And bear in mind that this is the constituency of the MPP's communications director, Yabu Abiyan Samoa. So I don't know whether he was the one who supplied this, this information to Dr. Baumia or Dr. Baumia himself conjured this non-existent astroturf in Adenta as one of the achievements. Now, a promise of building an airport in Cape Coast was received with some skepticism by residents because of some contrary facts 
stated by President Ekofado in an interview on ATL Radio. This is a place which is about one and a half hours from the capital, which is a major international airport. Uh, there's, there's an airport in Takrani. Um, I'm, 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 well, the studies are no, go, go ahead. You don't see the need of an airport. I don't say, yeah. say the need. Uh, okay. These things, they, 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 they're not the, res is the, the response of a government should not just be people saying we need an airport. The response of a government should, should be the matter has been thoroughly examined and the need has been established. I think that is the process that the Ministry of Aviation is going through. It's doing the same with Koforidia from where, from the region from which I come, which is also another regional location which is very near Accra, another an hour, an hour and a half, to be able to decide for ourselves whether in fact the need for the airport can be justified when you have Accra, you have Kumasi, you have Tamale, you have Takrani, whether on the coast um, with Accra's presence, there's a need for an additional airport. Okay. Now, a day after that statement was made, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Obamia said the airport project will come off after all. For the people of Cape Coast, I have good news for you. We are building a new harbor in Cape Coast and a new airport in Cape Coast. It is very critical that we do that. An airport makes a lot of sense in Cape Coast. So we have a major promise, a policy initiative, which will say that all tertiary students, except teacher and nursing trainees, so is there a contradiction? And if there is, why? Yes, Andrew Ejapamesa, Member of Parliament for Second D. Uh, what, what's strange about that? Uh, if, if the indication is that, and the President indicated that, look, some studies were ongoing to establish a need. And so if between the time that the President made the, granted the interview and the time of the manifesto, those studies have been completed without him knowing. And the party then proceeds to make an announcement. In less than that 24 effect. hours? Well, I'm surprised about why you think that is strange. Uh, because uh, you recall that the Excellency President had during the entire week uh, been touring uh, the Western region and the Central region as well. So I'm saying that potentially he could have been briefed subsequently after the interview that, look, this is. Uh, Something the interview that, was a day before. The interview yeah, was a day before. I know, I know, I know that the interview was on the Friday, mm -hmm. yeah, Friday morning, and I'm saying that the president receives daily briefings, you know, morning and evenings, and and so if uh, post the interview, he had found out that look, is the studies for the airport ready for Cape Coast, and he was apprised that yes, indeed, we have completed some studies, and that we can proceed to make an announcement to that effect to the people of Ghana and keep coast the next day when we're launching a manifesto. I feel to see how that mm. is strange. Mm. Mm. Now, on the other hand, Dr. Isaac Ousumenta of the University of Ghana Political Science Department seems to offer another explanation. The president as a person may not be very much interested in having the airport at that particular point in time of our history. And however, the government think that it's a very good thing to be done, and therefore it must be done. Let me be honest with you that it's not every policy and project of the government that every president in this world agrees to 100% at the end of the day. But they think that it is the interest of the government to have that project implemented. That's a live on Join News today with me, Daniel Dazi. There's a lot more coming up after this. Stay with us. Hello everyone, welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The minimal movement of vehicles due to the imposition of restrictions amid COVID-19 has impacted negatively on revenue of spare parts dealers at Abusuka here in Accra. The dealers say their earnings have gone down as a result. Nicholas Brown has more in the following report. 
Earlier this year, the spare parts dealers at Abuse Okan threatened to increase their prices, but later rescinded their decision due to the government's stimulus package. However, co-chairman of the Abuse Okan Spare Part Dealers Association, Clement Boatin, tells Joy Business they are yet to get a portion of the 600 million CD stimulus package. He therefore urged the National Board for Small Scale Industries to accelerate the modalities and disbursement process. And now they are in the process of uh, disbursing with those that are in, in the medium scale and then the small scale. And those disbursements uh, is going to be done through uh, in uh, conjunction with uh, some of the uh, local banks that uh, they, have, they have selected. So they are in the process, you know, of working out, you know, the modalities that uh, they are going to be, you know, uh, used to disperse the money. But it's the National Board for Small Scale Industries who are, you know, mandated to do this uh, COVID, you know, alleviation uh, uh, fund to support small, small businesses, to try as much as possible to speed up, you know, their process because our members are on our necks every now and then. They are asking us, when is this money coming? When is this money coming? So this, they should try and speed up the process because they promise us that uh, by, 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 by July, they will they will start the disbursement and hope to finish it by uh, August. But we are now uh, close to ending of August and they have not even started the disbursement of the small scale and medium scale enterprise. So this is President Ekufo Adu on August 17 commissioned and handed over the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade to the African Union Commission. The AFTA is expected to commence in 2021. Mr. Boatin says spare parts dealers in Abu Sokai are ready to take advantage of the continental free trade area. We are ready to take you know uh, advantage of this uh, uh, after, after because uh, you know already uh, be, be, because of this Ghana uh, automotive uh, manufacturing policy that government has has has, has, has introduced uh, we want to you know uh, partner with uh, the Ministry of Trade you know to at least try as much as possible you know to finance us as an association so that we could also start with you know a, a little little you know uh, parts manufacturing something like maybe the windscreen something like uh, uh, suspension rubbers something like uh, radiators we could you know start manufacturing those those little little you know spare parts to boost you know the automobile manufacturing policy that you know government has, has brought in place and even when we are able to you know establish you know factories of that nature we could also take advantage of the after and then send some of those parts to other african countries so far 30 countries have ratified the african continental free trade agreement including ghana kenya rwanda and niger reporting for joy business i am nicholas brown the Ghana Mine Workers Union is making a strong case for the recapitalization of the mining sector. According to the union, this is a better alternative to calls for the introduction of a windfall tax on mining profits. Speaking to Joy Business after the union's National Executive Council meeting, General Secretary Abdul Mumin Bana said an increased investment for the sector will improve its market offering and create more jobs. I believe as a union that it's important to recapitalize because recapitalization would afford opportunity for expansion of infrastructure, mining infrastructure and mining systems. We also believe that it will give us opportunity to increase exploration activity. And once exploration activity increases, there's opportunity for enhanced uh, production. And this certainly would afford us the opportunity as an industry to create a lot more jobs you know, for teeny young men and women, and indeed people who are falling out arising from this pandemic. So Ghana Man Workers Union actually believes that the government must lead the way. And how would the government lead the way? We believe the government must demand from mining companies in the industry some, you know, very robust plans, plans that would ensure that uh, windfall arising from the current price of gold you know, from about $2,000 with an only sustaining cost of average of between $950 to about $2,500. You are raking in close to about $400 to $500 per ounce as windfall, and that's free cash. And so we believe that rather than other, you know, skeptics would, would advocate that we introduce or we slap 
uh, or impose windfall tax on these mining companies, given the critical nature of the state we find ourselves as a country. The Government Workers Union believes that rather than imposing windfall taxes on these mining companies, we should give them opportunity to pump the money back into the business. And we've got a full bulletin coming up at 1 o'clock. Up next, sports. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News today. Let's go into our first story in sport. Now, the Secretary General of the Ghana Athletics Association, Bar Hussein, is confident that the sports will resume in the coming days. Now, sporting activities in the country have been put on hold since March due to COVID-19. But speaking to Joy Sports in an exclusive interview, Bar Hussaini believes that government will, still, will soon ease the restrictions on the sport. What I hear and for what I see around, um, I will not be surprised if the, His Excellency the President has uh, lifted the ban on sports. If you look at the world's sports is gradually emerging back, uh, competition has started, uh, triathlon is going on, football is going on, athletics is going on, basketball is going on, and I think volleyball or handball is also coming on next week. So gradually the world is coming back, the sporting world is coming back, I should say, and Ghana cannot be left out. So maybe they are just observing certain few things. If they are okay, they are to safe in Ghana for us to do sports, they will definitely come back. And I'm, I'm hoping sooner than later that decision will come so that we'll go back to sports and, and, and Ghanaians will have their sports to enjoy. With. Because Ghana loves sports. Ghana loves sports. Ghana loves sports. We cannot stay too long with our sports. And we cannot also rush into having our sports. So in between the two, I hope the state is doing all what it can to make it safe to do sports. And when the time comes, they will definitely allow us to do the sports. Sorry for that. Let's go back to our first story and talk about the Nash, uh, N NPP. They have uh, touted they, their achievements under the creative arts industry. They say their achievements include the commencement of the construction of the creative arts school and construction of the various movie theaters in the various regions, among others. Government has also started the construction of theaters in every region. Koforidia, Yewie, Kumasi, Yegusu, Tamale, Nitakrade, round two, Ebebasu. The government is also working to have the Creative Arts Bill passed. This bill, when passed, will establish the Creative Arts Fund. As a visionary government, the Nana Akufuadu-led government has also commenced the construction of the very first Creative Arts Senior High School. If this is not a visionary, then what is? Did you know the year of return has brought about renewed interest in investments in Ghana? We see great fortunes in a Leonardo led government. Great fortunes for the poet, the musician, the art writer, the script writer, the filmmaker, the dancer, the model, and the events organizers, and indeed, all our creative artists. The MPP government will... Away from that, ace musician Kojo Entry, popularly known as Mr. Music Man, has discouraged views in the music industry. Speaking in an interview with Aisha Ibrahim on PM Express personality profile, Kojo Entry advised musicians to let their music uh, rather speak for them than their utterances. It is not healthy. I think, and this is just an advice to the young ones, I think whatever you you uber put yourself say this is what i want to be speak with that talent if i say speak with that talent i'm talking about someone like azuma nelson being a boxer azuma never spoke he spoke with his fist ring he's not a he's not a speaker of parliament 
Yeah. And he speaks with his fist. Abedi Pele spoke with his foot. Pacho the Amiga, what he has said. if you've taken, I mean, taken on music and you say, I want to be a musician, speak with your music. Your music is out there. Your songs are out there. They are speaking for you. It's not time for you to go and, and battle with someone to show, say. Battle on um, yeah. words. But, maybe I, they will say I'm, I'm an old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> The music man could you enjoy there. That'll be all for showbiz here on Joy News Today. My name is Becky.